So in brief, gene former represent a pre-trained deep learning model. In other words, it's foundation model, from which fine tuning towards a broad range of downstream applications can be pursued to accelerate discovery of key network regulators and candidate therapeutic targets. So today we have great privilege of being joined by Dr. Christina Theodoris. So our lab leverages machine learning and experimental genomics to develop network correcting therapies for cardiovascular disease to design a network-based molecule screen where we screen for molecules affect not just in a single output, but on the network as a whole. And we train a machine learning algorithm to first distinguish healthy versus disease and then identify which molecules when treating the disease cells now cause the cells to classify as healthy. Previously performed this uh, framework applied to calcific aortic valve disease due to notch one helpful insufficient. And we found that this molecule was able to generalize to primary cells from patients with sporadic disease. However, there's been a really a rapid expansion in the amount of single cell transcriptomic data that's available from human tissues more broadly. So it was our question whether we could take advantage of all this large scale data that's now available through the machine learning approach of transfer learning to improve our predictions in settings where we don't have as much information. And so here we took this approach to develop a novel deep learning model called GeneFormer, which we pre-trained on a large scale pre-training corpus, uh, which we call Gene Corpus 30M, which we assembled from publicly available data with 30 million single cell transcriptomes from a broad range of human right. tissues. For each single cell transcriptome, we presented to the model as a rank value encoding. Uh, now performing this rank value encoding, this then proceeds through six layers of transformer encoder. The components is the self attention layer, um, which through the course of the training, the model is able to learn which genes in this case, pay attention to which other genes within the transcriptome to optimize the learning objective. And so over the course of the pre-training, we found that in specific attention heads, GeneFormer learned in a self-supervised manner to attend significantly more to genes we know to play an important role within regulating. This. We then tested the model's ability to enable predictions in a diverse array of downstream tasks. Here, we're distinguishing dosage sensitive versus insensitive transcription factors uh, by fine tuning GeneFormer. And we found that GeneFormer was able to significantly boost predictions of these candidate disease genes compared to alternative approach. And asked GeneFormer to interpret the effect that this individual or combination deletions would have on the embedding of the other genes within the context of the single cell transcriptome to indicate network connections, as well as the impact on the cells embedding as a whole to indicate the effect on cell state. And we found that here, compared to the individual deletion of GATA4 or TBX5, in silico deletion of their combination had a significantly more detrimental effect on these um, particular co-bound targets compared to what would be expected by the sum of their individual effects. Silico deletion now on the embedding of the cardiomyces as a whole. And here, when we in silico deleted genes that are known to play an important role on structural heart disease and cardiomyopathy, we found that had a significantly more detrimental effect on these cardiomyocyte embeddings. And so through the course of the fine tuning, GeneFormer is able to define within the embedding space where these particular states lie. And having done that, you can then perform in silico perturbation, um, you know, as we gain more and more powerful models with more and more pre-training data. Um, so, you know, if, a, if there's already a task that simple approaches can perform well in, there's no need to use one of these models. We really want to be using these to push our um, boundaries of what we can understand biologically. Um, and as we gain more powerful models, we're going to be able to um, hopefully make predictions and more challenging tasks. And then, um, the approaches of transfer learning uh, with from large scale data um, to include modeling of their um, co-regulators or signaling pathways that might affect um, its, uh, its role in different contexts, um, both in space and different tissues, as well as in time developmentally and with aging. So the first question actually coming from Gabriel, there's a recent published preprint comparing SCGBT and GeneFormer in zero-shot settings. The preprint showed that neither SCGBT nor GeneFormer can accurately predict gene expression in the evaluation data sets. Do you have any comments on these findings? 
hands, is it compulsory to fine tune the model before performing analysis? Is there any analysis that can be performed by GeneFormer at zero shot setting? And I GeneFormer doesn't predict gene expression. Um, so the, through the mass learning objective, um, what is predicting again is what gene is indicated in that particular mass position. So, um, you know, you're really just predicting what's in that mass position. And although that's used for the pre-training objective, that's not really the goal of the model. I mean, we're not using it for imputation. Um, we're using that learning objective to have a generalizable understanding model. The purpose of the model is not to, you know, just generate this checkpoint that can then make any prediction. It's to generate a checkpoint that's going to then with fine tuning be way better than if you started from randomly initialized weights. You can now start from weights that are uh, already pre-trained to have general information of network dynamics. Another question is from uh, Expo. How does GeneFormer handle different type of data? Like, do you plan to have any, um, you know, incorporate any different type of data or multi-omics into, into this? A previous model that I co-developed uh, in my postdoc called Mira, that you know, really having it in the same single cell makes a huge difference because they don't always occur you know, in a synchronized manner. And if you don't have them in the same cell, then you're necessarily only matching things that look the same. But if you have the chromatin display that's you know, changing at a different time scale, or there's genes that the chromatin display remains the same, but the transcription is changing. And so you, know, you wouldn't get that information if you didn't have them in the same single cell. Another question, um, as GeneFormer exclude McLean cells in the training, should we refrain from applying GeneFormer to cancer cells and limit its use in stromo and immune cells analysis only? Uh, one, one important point is like, when you fine tune the model, um, you're going to learn those cancer dependent representations of the network, um, or you can also extend the pre-training using uh, a cancer data set, which we've also done in the past. Um, and um, the model, even with, you know, types type of cells or tissues that was not present in the pre-training corpus, when you fine tune it, it's going to see that and learn about that. All right. Thank you so much, Christina and everyone for joining the webinar. Thank you. Bye-bye.